We are we are in the midst of transporting. So what's up. happening now? Well, we're waiting to cross the border. We all, most of us, have gotten our passports back. And now, well, we're waiting to cross the border. We have to wait for the officials to come over here and say that it's okay. And then what happens? And then we're gonna go travel to the camp. We actually, we're not really sure who's in charge of our transportation. We're waiting for some leads from the officials. Go, go, go. This is not for you. Leave. What? We'll be here for three months. This is the uh, humanitarian crisis simulation. We've been training them for the sim participants that are comprised of our students, 26 students. We've been training them for the last two days, and now the live action has started. They have just crossed a border. Please give. Please. This is really typically the, the first sort of uh, challenge that, say, an assessment mission would face in country, and often people are easily rattled at the outset, and if they aren't able to successfully navigate the border crossing, then they're typically sort of off their game for the remainder of the assessment mission. They make we lists. They notes. all we make lists stuff. and nothing happens. You come always and you ask the same questions and you give nothing. So obviously there are limitations to what happens in a classroom. The simulation exercise is a great opportunity for students to really begin to apply some of what they're learning and see how it works or doesn't work well in the field. Basically at this point, they're trying to apply the learning that we've essentially emphasized in the classroom, and yes, we've used case studies and other things, but this is more of a three-dimensional model. So they're talking to IDPs, they're talking to women's committee members, local government officials, Red Cross, Red Crescent, society, and this information that they're collecting should then inform the proposal that they will pick to the donor panel in the morning. And so they've, they've helped other women within the camp. One of the main benefits of a simulated exercise is giving students an opportunity to practice, um, but not practice on people who are in real need. The last thing you want to do is to have somebody unprepared, um, untrained, out in the field, um, where they can actually affect people's lives in a very significant way. We partner up for the simulation exercise with the Graduate School of Professional Psychology. It's really important for us to be able to partner up with a program with a similar focus on humanitarian assistance within the university for two reasons. One is that it allows us to expand the scope of what we're looking at. And if you guys help, we help you, please. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. But it also allows us to replicate for students what it's like to work in a team with people who come from different professional backgrounds, who maybe have a different approach to the same situation. We think that it's a really important um, opportunity for us to build bridges and connect people and have them understand the diversity of professions involved in humanitarian assistance. So we, we appreciate all the work that you've been doing. The objective of the simulation is for the students to be able to assess what's happening, identify the most pressing challenge, and develop a program to address that challenge. So what they produce at the end of the simulation is a proposal that outlines what they think are the most critical needs in the protection sector and what they plan to do about them. They then have to compete for funding in front of a very skeptical and challenging donor panel in order to be able to implement their program. Get out of here! You leave your pigs have here! Our get, looking. I do not care! Get, get out! Leave! Leave! You do not belong here! Go! Go! These go, are desperate go. times. Even Steve. before they entered the country, this team of aid workers go. were overwhelmed by the scale of the disaster. We need this! We need this! We need um, The women in her group have helped women give birth. Resources are scarce. This is makeshift assistance. And Tessa is here for this. Well, we're finding a lot of people who are in crisis right now. The new elements that we added this year, including the work with the media, including the work with new technologies and some of the um, security issues that we added into the simulation, um, really served the purpose of uh, helping us evaluate student performance as well as helping them understand some of the challenges they'll be put under and that um, stress doesn't always involve a gun. It's 3.30 in the morning. We're just about to wake them up. They've just received a security inject with a credible threat against humanitarians, and basically we want them to go to the central mustering point.
We've gotten a security release that there's been an attack on a Chadian worker who's been killed and there are threats of more attacks on NGOs in the area, so we've been prepared to evacuate. Do you think this will be the end of your mission? We're not sure at this point. We have a member by the name of Kelsey on the red team. They're a bit bedraggled, they've had very little sleep, and we provided a lot of uh, injects that were intended to stress them a bit, but I think that they did really quite a brilliant job of coping and um, personally I was a bit relieved once we concluded the live action because I thought we'd pretty much push them to the brink. It was stressful. It was an incredible learning experience. Um, makes me a little scared to do this in real life but it was definitely a good uh, good starting point. Um, I learned a lot about what I what my weaknesses strengths are um, and also I think we learned a lot about team team leadership and working together. We can walk away from this with knowing that this is a safe space to learn in even though it's a simulated not safe space. So it is valuable, entirely invaluable to our teams um, and both of our programs. So one of the things was they, the, our, we had two different groups going in there. We had the site people, the, the IDPs or whatever they're called, and then there's the humanitarian assistance. And we are, we really don't know anything about self-help or touchy-feely, and I certainly didn't. But it was so nice. Uh, being around people who did. I, I hope that there's as much diversity in the field than what we experienced in the simulation. The sim really put into my head, top of mind, you're going into an experience that can help you figure out where do you want to go? Do you want to be in the field? Or do you want to be in DC? Or do you want both? And what that actually looks like. And so I, I um, have access to people who can give me that information and I'm there's such a fire lit under me right now to take advantage of it and I think it, it came directly from the sim. It was a different, a very different experience and a different quality of learning in terms of controlling people and um, pulling out the best out of your team members and also being responsible when things go bad which they did several times over the over the course of the last few days. And so. your team still got the proposal award. Yay! Bravo! <laughs> Klaus? Klaus? We believe that this is the wave of the future the simulations of humanitarian contexts are being used by organizations around the world, um, including non-governmental organizations, UN organizations, both to prepare and train their staff, as well as to test who's really ready to go into the field. And so we think that giving them the opportunity to do this in an academic setting is a real innovation and allows our students to have a leg up in the job market in the future. Don't take the child. Don't take the child. Okay. No. Could I? Don't take our child. Um, okay. The government's no good. Uh, you mean food and food for their family. Bye. Hey guys, Sims finished. What are you gonna do? Relax. Relax. You want the real answer? Or you want the fun answer? <laughs>